Hello everybody, and welcome to Ancient Architects. Please subscribe now to get the latest ancient history news and independent research from around the world. In my last video I explained the geology of the blocks of saxe Man, and because there are natural veins of calcite running through them, and also because there are natural outcrops of the same rock type right next to the famous structure, it is now somewhat conclusive that the walls of this fortress are in fact made of cut blocks of natural stone. This is all based on the geological findings of a team of scientists who investigated the site back in 2012. As part of their work, which was to understand why the walls of saxe Horman were subsiding, extensive geophysical surveys were undertaken. They discovered that the bedrock and soils were fissuring, processes that were going on at quite some depth. The megalithic walls were therefore subsiding naturally. A new drainage system for the site was therefore recommended. In this video I'm also looking at the work of the scientists as I take a look at the large circular feature just north of saxe Horman, situated right next to the famous Rodadero Formation, which is a geological natural lava extrusion known by many as the Inca Slides. This mysterious feature is known as Coca Chincanus. It almost looks like some kind of arena, but some believe it is actually an Inca graveyard. On its far side is the natural sacred spring of Calispuccio, where it is said that ceremonies once took place, initiating boys into manhood. Excavations have uncovered crystals and shells, some originating as far away as Ecuador, and such finds are often associated with water veneration. In Quencha, the term coca refers to a lake, pool or pond, either natural or man-made. Because of the natural spring right next to Coca Chincanus, it is therefore very possible that this round structure was in fact an artificial pond, maybe for ceremonial or practical purposes or maybe both. It's possible it also had some agricultural use, maybe linked to ancient canals for irrigation purposes. It is thought that the Rodadero Formation once held a throne for the Inca Emperors, and so, this whole region opposite saxe Horman was likely a very important location in the times of the Inca. So, the artificial lake must have had incredible significance. Yet, many still say it wasn't a pond, but was in fact an important Inca graveyard. I'm sure it was important in Inca times, but it is likely much, much older, because at the edges of Coca Chincanus, there are many of the famous large rocks with sharp cuts, geometric features and sometimes steps cut into them. They're made of limestone and the surface is strongly eroded. We see many diverse shapes and features, and it's very likely they did come together in a very specific way, maybe to form some ancient pre-Inca constructions. In truth, it is an archaeological mess, and making sense of it is extremely difficult. But, most believe that these are evidence of pre-Inca people in the region of saxe Horman. Therefore, due to the proximity of Coca Chincanus, that too could well be an early pre-Inca structure. But, what actually is it? To try and get to the bottom of this mystery, it was scanned in 2012 by the team of Peruvian, Russian and Ukrainian experts. They set out a rectangular area inside the circle, so they could record specific geophysical profiles to see what lies below the soil. 35 profiles were recorded, allowing scientists to record a 3D model of the research area. Interestingly, several subterranean objects were identified as quite peculiar. Between marks 2 and 4 on this picture, almost at the edge of the profiles, is the flat top of a large stone close to the surface. Experts from the VNI ISMI Institute in Russia said this object was likely a grave, but if not, they are 90% sure that it is a man-made structure. The top is pretty much at ground level, and it is shown here with the red arrow. And here we can see a radar gram of the object, and although I'm more of a geologist than a geophysicist, the experts said they could clearly make out an underground tomb or chamber of some kind. 
Near Mark 1, a trench or pit of some kind was also found and it went down at least 2 metres, going on for around 20 metres in length. In one profile known as Profile 8, at quite a significant depth, a big stone was located on the radar. This is marked 1 on the diagram. Number 2 is some kind of large flat platform, again going down for quite some depth. Also, this curve in the lower left hand corner shows the bottom of Coca Chincarnas, and as we can see, it implies that the bottom of this structure has a curved bowl like bottom, which may go down at least 20 metres or 65 feet. The reason it appears so faintly on the diagram is because the experts were using equipment to only scan the subsurface features. They didn't plan to scan such depths, and for that, different equipment is needed but one can assume that features 1 and 2 did go all the way down to the bottom. There really isn't a lot more to add, but this is clearly a very complicated and archaeologically rich area. To summarise, and from the limited data available, this seems to be the history of Coca Chincarnas. First of all, a large deep bowl was cut into the bedrock, right next to a natural spring giving a logical interpretation that originally, this was certainly some kind of artificial reservoir or pond. Whether at the same time as its construction or later, stone features were added inside. Walls and platforms, maybe huge cut stones or sections of bedrock left in situ. These seem to extend from the bottom right up to near the surface. The internal compartments created by the stone structures indicate to me that this body of water had a function, whether ceremonial, agricultural, funerary or something else I don't know. Then we find there is a chamber covered by a large stone, as well as a large ditch near the surface. The stone features just mentioned could all be part of one construction project, maybe turning this ancient reservoir into an important Inca tomb. But personally, I doubt the idea that this was all made to be an Inca tomb. Logic and evidence as it just can't be right. A possible phase 2, but I even doubt that. The size and scale of this site, and its proximity to a natural source of water, makes it feel like it did have a different purpose. And reading the paper, Cokers on Andean Highlands, which I've linked below, showed me what the internal features really are. There is apparently an ancient agricultural technique that is based on the use of cokers. They are natural or man-made depressions on high ground, always next to a source of water. The cokers become flooded by the natural source of water, which in the case of Coca Chincarnas, is of course the natural spring. They are the central part of a system for distributing water via canals to the surrounding landscape. For managing water and soil saturation, so to allow the ancient Andean people to farm and survive. It's a water tank as well as being used for crops and pasture. People could take control of water in a region that could be subject to severe droughts in periods of low rainfall. Cocas in Peru generally all had internal structures, just like what was picked up by the geophysics in 2012. Such features are often radial and concave, which apparently reduces evaporation by solar radiation and wind. But others believe the radial features actually acted like some kind of calendar system, allowing farmers to measure time like a giant sundial, providing reference points for seed sowing and so on. Many cocas have been deliberately destroyed in Peru ever since the Spanish invasion. But features inside them and surrounding them could have been vast, and the now destroyed stone structures on the edges of Coca Chincarnas are therefore likely to be all part of this important water system. The eroded nature of the limestone is likely from the abundance of water. It's no surprise that we find Coca Chincarnas on the top of a hill, because, as stated, this would allow the water to reach surrounding landscape easily. Coca structures are found right across Peru and Bolivia, and all the experts agree that they do have pre-Inca origins. They were used by the Pacara culture, whose main population centre was near Lake Titicaca. This dates back to around 1800 BC. 
Kokas were also used at Tiwanaku, which fell around 1000 AD, and then the Wari and Inca cultures continued to use them as well. So far, only a small part of Kokachin Karnas has been surveyed, but with more work and excavation, we may find that it does indeed have many internal features, just like the other Kokas in South America. Understanding Kokachin Karnas could well be the key to understanding the development of the Sacsayhuaman region as a whole. Boreholes should be taken and material radiocarbon dated at various depths, which could give us some indication of when the bowl was first dug out. Is it an Inca construction, or is this material evidence for a pre-Inca origin of Sacsayhuaman? We can all speculate about the origins of this site, but at the bottom of this structure, there would likely be some hard datable evidence we can draw upon. I do think we are looking at an ancient pre-Inca man-made feature of the landscape, adopted and reused by the Inca at a later date. I think that this region is even more interesting than Sacsayhuaman itself. Sacsayhuaman is a mind-boggling construction, but Kokachin Karnas and the surrounding large blocks that display the sharp geometric cuts are even more mysterious. But there could be a simple explanation for everything we see, and I'll be looking into this further in future videos. Thank you very much for watching this episode of Ancient Architects. If you enjoyed the video, please subscribe to the channel, please like the video, and please leave a comment below. Thank you very much.